Audio Jungle. <laughs> Hey guys, Marco here and uh, welcome back uh, to my channel and today I'm here in the Dream Aeros Boeing 737-800 uh, simulator. I'm uh, with uh, Mohem and we are going to talk about the GPWS system. First of all, let's go and check an overview of the system and then we'll come back here and we'll talk about the control for the GPWS. Okay guys, let's talk about an overview of the GPWS system on the Boeing 737 800NG. Um, the ground proximity warning system, GPWS, alerts the crew about terrain and vertical flight path dangers. The GPWS operates below 2,450 feet radio altitude. It does not alert the crew of flight toward vertically sheer terrain or of slow descents into unprepared terrain while configured for landing. The GPWS includes a GPWS control panel. You can see it here. And below glide slope lights. You can see it here. And there is one on the, on the captain side. Oral annunciations are broadcast on two overhead flight deck loudspeakers. The GPWS provides alerts based on radio altitude and combinations of biometric altitude, airspeed, Glide slope deviation and airplane configuration. Okay, guys, we just checked the overview of the GPWS system. Now let's talk about the controls we have here in the cockpit. And we are going to start talking about the EFIS control panel, which you can see here. There's one for the, the first officer, and there's another one for the captain there. If we uh, press the terrain switch, which is called Terrain Display Select Switch. It shows terrain data in expanded map, which we can see here. Center map, so we can press here. And you can see it here in the navigation display. Expanded viewer, uh, we move here. And expanded approach mode. Arms terrain data in plan mode, right here. Center view R and center approach modes. This selects weather radar display regardless of mode selector position. Second push, this selects terrain display. Okay, in the left and right forward panels, we have the below glide slow push inhibit light here, and we have it for the captain right there. In the right forward panel, we have the ground proximity uh, panel with all the controls. You can see them here. We are going to talk about each of them. The GPWS has seven ground proximity alerts. Excessive descent rate, excessive terrain closure rate, altitude loss after takeoff or go around, unsafe terrain clearance with gear and flaps up, deviation below glide slope, bank and altitude advisories, wind shear. In addition to providing the functions of the basic GPWS, the EGPWS, which is the Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, monitors terrain proximity using an internal worldwide terrain database. Proximate terrain data shows on the navigation display. If there is a potential terrain conflict, alerts are provided based on estimated time to impact. These alerts are look ahead terrain alerts. And we will be talking about these alerts in part two next week. Now let's talk about the GPWS alerts. First one, we'll talk about biometric descent alert. If the airplane biometric descent rate becomes large, the sync rate oral sounds continuously and the red pull up words show on the attitude indicator. So you can see it here. If the rate of descent becomes dangerous, a whoop whoop 
pull up or a warning sounds and the red pull up words show on the attitude indicators. So what we are going to hear is this. Sync rate. Pull up. Okay. Let's go to the next alert and we will talk about the terrain closure rate alert. If radio altitude decreases quickly, the terrain oral sounds two times and the red pull-up words show on the attitude indicators. If the condition is not corrected after terrain sounds, the whoop whoop pull-up oral warning sounds and the red pull-up words show on the attitude indicators. So this is what we are going to hear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. All right. Now that we are talking about terrain, I want to show you this information you can find in FCON Volume 2 about the terrain display, terrain modernization, and terrain elevation number. I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, the only thing I want to tell you is that the terrain is depicted depending uh, if the airplane is 500 feet or more above the highest terrain or if the airplane is less than 500 feet above the highest terrain in the selected display range. So you can see here the different colors and how it is uh, the terrain depicted. Okay, number two is the terrain modernization. We can see it here. You can see number three, it's a look ahead alert. You can see it here. Red look ahead terrain warning alert is active, amber Look ahead, terrain caution alert is active. Same for the obstacle. Number four is the terrain elevation number. In green, terrain elevation is more than 500 feet below airplane altitude. Amber, terrain elevation is between 500 feet below and 2,000 feet above airplane altitude. Red, terrain elevation is more than 2,000 feet above airplane altitude. In this picture, you can uh, see like a vertical profile of it. So you can identify the colors easily. Now we will continue with the GPWS alerts and we'll talk about takeoff and go around alerts. If barometric altitude decreases too much during the initial takeoff climb or during a go around, the don't sink or else sounds continuously, the red pull up words show on the attitude indicators. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. That's the one. Next one is the landing configuration terrain alert. The too low terrain or else sounds continuously when the airplane is below 1,000 feet radio altitude at high air speeds. The red pull up words show on the attitude indicators. At low air speeds, the too low gear or else sounds continuously if the airplane flies near the terrain with the landing gear up. The red pull-up words show on the attitude indicators. When the landing gear are down, but the flaps are not in a landing position, the red pull-up words show on the altitude indicators and the too low flaps oil sounds continues. Too low terrain. Too low gear. Too low flaps. Okay, now let's talk about the below glide slope alert. Below glide slope alerts arm below 1,000 feet radio altitude with landing gear down. Flight below an ILS glide slope causes continuous glide slope oil and the below glide slope lights to illuminate. At first, the oil sounds at one half the volume. Continued flight below glide slope changes the glide slope alerts to full volume spoken at a faster rate. Glide slope. Glide slope. Now we'll talk about the bank and altitude advisories. The bank angle alert tells the crew of 35, 40, and 45 degree bank angles. During the final approach, a voice speaks minimums and radio altitudes. Bank angle. Minimums. 
500, 400, 300, 200, 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. That's it. And now let's talk about the wind shear alerts. So in this table, you have the wind shear warning, airplane in wind shear. The oral alert, two-tone siren followed by wind shear. Visual alert, red wind shear on both attitude indicators. You can see it here. Description, excessive wind shear at the current airplane position detected by GPWS. Enabled below 1500 feet greater altitude. GPWS wind shear detection begins at rotation. Something to remember and is important to know, the wind shear alerts are available during takeoff, approach and landing. The GPWS provides a warning when the airplane is in a wind shear. The difference with the weather radar is that this one provides alerts for excessive wind shear ahead of the airplane. And these are predictive wind shear alerts. A wind shear warning stays active until wind shear conditions are no longer sensed. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. That's what we are going to hear. Now we'll talk about the GPWS resets and inhibits. And in order to see this, let's watch the following video. And remember, next week uh, we will be uploading part two of the GPWS system, where we will be talking about the look ahead uh, terrain. So guys, uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next week. Okay, if we talk about the below glide slope, uh, push inhibit light is amber and indicates we are below the glide slope uh, the below glide slope alert is active. If we push the light, it inhibits ground proximity glide slope alert when below 1,000 feet radio altitude. If we talk about the inoperative light here, it's amber and it means the GPWS computer malfunction or power loss. Invalid inputs are being received from radio altimeter, ADIRU, ILS receiver, IRS, FMC, a stall management computers or EFIS control panel. Okay, let's talk about the system test switch. And to the left side of the screen, you can see what happens when we press this switch momentarily on the ground. Now let's talk about the flapping inhibit switch. Two positions, a flapping inhibit and norm. In flapping inhibit inhibits ground proximity to low flaps alert. And if you want to select the inhibit position, just lift the guard and move the switch to the out position, like this. Normal, guarded position, normal too low flaps alert is active. Now if we move to the gear inhibit switch, gear inhibit and normal positions, in gear inhibit, inhibits ground proximity too low gear alert. In normal, normal too low gear alert is active. Now the last one, terrain inhibit, Two positions as well, terrain inhibit and norm. In terrain inhibit, inhibits look ahead terrain alerts and terrain display. In normal, normal terrain alerts and terrain display are active.